is the first Dragon spacecraft. This is actually the first commercial spacecraft to ever orbit the Earth and successfully re-enter. Uh, before this spacecraft, the only people who had ever done it were the United States, China, and the Soviet Union and Russia. Right, this is like what, what everyone had to take SpaceX here. How's it going, Andrew? Um, their coverage they're doing for this is fantastic. Fantastic. Oh my God! I mean, it tells me. It tells me they. I got to assume they're fairly confident. Look at the way they're laying everything out, giving you the exact uh, timeline on everything on there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're always confident. It's just that how they've progressed from. I think it's just that is how they're you know building as as they get more attention. And is am I garbled or is that you? That's a. Uh, well, I, I'm hearing what sounds like room mic. I don't know if you're uh, just far away from your microphone or what. Oh no, I'm I'm sorry, that's I'm afraid, but yeah, your signal's coming through like uh, like Yeah, it's it's a little chunkalicious on my end too, but it's it looks all right. Here, let me uh here here let me where we are. Let me just I just cut, I was watching the SpaceX feed on my computer too. Sure. Let me just cut that out. And I'll yeah. uh Yeah, this is this is like it looks like uh 1999 video here. I don't know what's Uh huh, huh it's not that bad on my end. Uh Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna get us. Uh, let me add one more shot here. Uh, remote desktop presenter source. Whoops, not that one. Nope, delete. Ah, crap. Yeah. No, I just caused this thing to crap the bed. And we are alone in the void. However, we are still transmitting. So sit tight. We're going to start this up again. <clears throat> okay, so here we are. And if I were to go oh, here. Uh, undo. Let's add shot. Set it to this crop it appropriately in the backs of those trucks to make sure they get to the place that they need to be in good condition but in order to do this orbcom must provide them with continuous coverage or a constant signal from the satellite to the receivers on the ground and do it globally and this is where their orbit comes into play falcon 9 is going to launch these 11 satellites to low earth orbit which in this case is about 200 and kilo 620 kilometers high which is approximately the distance from la to san francisco so while that may be close it's certainly not easy Satellites in low Earth orbit have to move really, really fast in order to keep up with the curvature of the Earth as they're orbiting to avoid deorbiting and crashing into the planet. In fact, they're going so fast that they make one orbit in only 90 minutes. So for a single satellite in low Earth orbit going at about eight kilometers per second, as it zips past its receiver on the ground, it loses its signal. Hence the 11 satellites, which are forming what is called a constellation. With the constellation, as one of those as one of those little satellites zips past, there's another one right behind it to pick up that signal to provide that continuous coverage. And with these satellites being strategically placed around the globe, they can provide global coverage to their customers. These 11 satellites that we're launching today are going to join the 31 others that are already in Orbcom's constellation on orbit, which includes six that Falcon 9 launched back in 2014. So we've been with Orcom for a while. They've been a great customer and a great partner, and we thank them for this launch today. So now that we know our rocket of, or our mission objectives for today, let's learn about the rocket. We told you about this upgraded Falcon 9. Process Improvement Engineer Kate Tice is going to tell you more about what we've done. Hey, Kate. Hey, Tim. Uh, nice to meet you, and thanks for taking time to tell me things. I have a lot of questions. No problem. Uh, I've been told there's upgrades to the Falcon 9. Yeah. Which is cool, because it was already a really rad rocket. So thinking from top to bottom of the rocket, we've extended the second stage as well as the interstage. We now have densified propellant, liquid oxygen. We also have a 33% increase to our performance. It's taller, it's a longer rocket. Right. Why? We have extended the size of the second stage because we've decided to add more propellant to that engine. So we have extended the length of it as well as extended the skirt of the engine itself. Okay, right, so the skirt. Yeah. I'm le I've learned things. So the skirt is what I've been calling the bell. Yeah. All right, so the Falcon 9 is the Falcon 9 because there's nine of these. Yeah. I'm going to hang up.
I can't the see, and it's all coming in garbled. Yeah. Because uh, the second stage has one big energy. Uh, <laughs> Why is it bigger than the other? Okay. Whenever we are ascending through the atmosphere as we launch from planet Earth, we have to escape the pull of gravity. So we need lots of engines tied together to help us do that. Once the second stage and first stage separate, first stage will come back down and re-land. Second stage will continue on. At this point, it's already in the vacuum of space, so the engine has to be a little bit different to Any better? operate in that new environment. I, well, I heard the background audio is really loud, and it's coming through garbled, so it's making it harder, but I can't see you at all. I didn't understand. All liquid oxygen is, is really cold oxygen. So cold that it's liquid. Yeah. And you need to take it with you because there's no oxygen in space, and yeah. making it liquid allows you to take a thousand times the oxygen mm -hmm. per volume. It's a thousand times denser. Yeah. Uh, but then you said in the upgraded Falcon 9, the oxygen is colder. So what, what does that right. mean and, and why? We had chilled liquid oxygen before, also known as LOX. Now it's super chilled. So it's a lot colder than it was before, allowing the, the molecules to pack together tighter and therefore allowing us to take more of those oxygen molecules with us into space. So still liquid, yeah. but closer to the freezing point then. Yes. This is so interesting and so exciting. Thank you. We're at T-minus 8 minutes and 23 seconds and counting. We're still go here at SpaceX headquarters for an on-time launch. Earlier, we had a go-no-go -no -go readiness poll at T-minus 38 minutes. That's where the SpaceX launch conductor guaranteed... Just to call me. I, are you still trying to pick something on your end? Or? Uh, no, I mean, everything seems to be working okay on this. Oh, We're now uh, inside of 10 minutes. Well, I'm going to restart Skype. Oh, oh I, I'm sorry. I just... Hold, hold on one second. I just realized... The background is so loud. Wait, 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 wait. I just realized that when I rebooted... Uh, or don't wait. You can just leave. Liquid oxygen is continuing to load on the second stage. We'll finish liquid oxygen loading somewhere between T minus three minutes and T minus two minutes. There we go. Now we load propellant from the ground storage tank through umbilicals. The first stage gets loaded through an umbilical that plugs into the base of the first stage. You can't see that on the views that we're showing you on the camera. The second stage is connected with an umbilical that comes from the erector Sorry about that, guys. over to the base of the second stage. In a few minutes, we'll see the erector recline away from the Falcon 9 you may get a view of those umbilicals. We've uh, got liquid better. oxygen. Oh, great. Yeah, uh, apologies. I, I um, the the in the restarting, stage. I forgot to enable Currently one of the outputs. On the spacecraft side, the Orbcom spacecraft have transferred to internal power. Nothing left to do between now and launch. The range continues to be go. Weather continues so to be go. So have you been following also, what they talked about as far as the, cool, the colder liquid oxygen? Lizards. Uh, well, I saw I saw that they were saying that you know by taking they have to take their own oxygen and they're able to you know cram a lot more of it in there. Is that is that be colder, super cold liquid? Hopefully yeah, it is. It is much much. It's probably it's the coldest that like anybody's ever tried for a launch. I, I would not have thought that uh, that that super cooling. I, I thought once you went hit liquid, that's about as compact as it was going to get. Um. Guess not. Um, <laughs> I, uh, this, yeah, I, cryo fluids is new to me too, but apparently, and I didn't, it's another one of those things that the SpaceX engineers are like, hey, you know what we could do? And they're like, well, that's not done before. Like, yeah, why don't we do it? <laughs> and are like, well, you have, you know, once you make it colder, you have a lot more, you have a lot more sealing problems and things like that. It makes it more difficult as far as you trying to do that. But they're like, yeah, well, if we solve those, um, then it's a good thing. So, They're like, yeah, that would be a good thing. I wonder. I wonder. Do, do you think that uh, that the near success of the fact that they were able to at least get the uh, get the previous incarnations to land on on the drone barge? was part of like like I, I assume it's a big deal that they got permission to to use this old decommissioned landing pad. Yeah. Hey, I'm uh what's going on, dad? Who me? Turn around and heading back towards the pad as the vehicle starts to descend through the atmosphere. Yeah, it's on. It's on. It's my dad. Uh, oh, got it. Got it. Live streaming right now uh with Brian Brushwood. <laughs> Say hello. Hi, Andrew's dad. He says, "Well, yeah, it's still on in like 5 minutes." minutes after launch, so it's pretty quick from the time we left off to the time we land. I've always looked at what we're about to do here. Let me one of those call you and that, get you the report. People will always yeah. remember where they were the first time they heard <laughs> SpaceX landed a rocket, and it's going to happen right there. <laughs> well, you know, I'm getting some clouds up here. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, hey, can you can you send me video, Andrew? Or are you worried about messing up? Oh, I thought I sent you video. Oh. Uh, no, not yet. Very weird job. No, I have. Uh, now it just it looks like. I, I was on and then I just reset it. There we go. Yeah, now it's coming in. And in fact, it's.
right at the time, right now, we're actually about to start retracting that strong back. And so what's really cool here is that these people, we've most everybody except for the guy who is the, I think, did the, the podcast or whatever, these are SpaceX people. These They've been talking to people. These are people working for the company, talking about the technology. Dude, can you imagine the energy there at SpaceX right now? It's like, this has to be... This is like waiting for the lottery. I mean, if they if they land this thing, it's going to be uh, maybe the most significant commercial advancement in space flight. Uh, I mean, proof of a reusable uh, uh, multi-stage rocket that's huge. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, that's what we've been saying on weird things. You know, we've been we've been. Uh, Five years now. I mean, you know, I, I, we've been feeding this drum, <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's exciting though because you go look at like the Reddit, the if you go to uh, reddit.com r slash uh, SpaceX, yeah, there's a great community there, and they've done a really good job of updating and keeping things going. And I remember like driving up like with Justin to go watch a launch. A SpaceX launch when there was just a handful of people there that even you knew know. or cared what SpaceX was. But it was, but it, Dude, it's just are, getting the word out, you know. And that's what's exciting is more. It's not that like, oh, we were too, we were cool because we were into it. It was just that we heard about it, you know. And as more people hear about it. They're getting into this. Well, and it's one of those things where it's like they understand the context of what's so revolutionary about this and what's so ambitious about it. Uh, man, this is... So those of you tuning in, the launch is scheduled for 529. It's an instantaneous launch, which means they have to press that button and launch it then or push till tomorrow where they'll have a 15-minute window. So right now they're retracting the tower, which uh, means it, you know... It's good news. It's good, good news. news. Um, unless, well, I don't want to do any Star Wars spoilers. <laughs> There's a scene. We're watching something very similar to something we saw. Um, and if you haven't been following the SpaceX coverage over time, uh, it's really evolved considerably. They, you know, we listen to a lot of the SpaceX engineers and people are actively on it. They're not just photogenic hosts. These are actually people who work for SpaceX doing this, which is. It's great, you know. If you're, you know, if you're a 17 year old kid right now and watching this, it can maybe change, you know, what your career path is going to be. Maybe, you know, don't go into the humanities. It's overdone. Uh, although on the flip side, it's like, do you really want to get into the sciences, knowing that the robots are just going to do it better? <laughs> Somebody's got to build those robots, Brian. That's true. That's true. Dude, dude, this is electric. Let me see if I can get the the the, the kids up here. Copy that on wind loads. So we're at on one. LB verify. Go for long. So loads look good. Dude, one minute, twenty six seconds. And the landing will happen 10 minutes after, and they're going to have coverage of the pad. And that's the other thing. I wonder how much of that was like, hey, man, let us land it on the pad. We can at least get it close to there, and we could get good footage of the whole thing. I mean, just the fact that we live in a world where all of this is live streamed at all times is just, I don't know. I'm sure our grandparents said the same thing about the moon landing. Yeah, as they watched it on the internet. <laughs> well, no, I mean, as they watched it on TV, you know. No, Brian, they have the internet then. You're wrong. I think that... Yeah, I think that it's a you know there were there were some really significant launches then that that stage really stage changed stage. our ideas of what happened and you know the the two most exciting things that happened in the first part of space travel Sputnik and Yuri Gagarin happened we found out about them after the fact <laughs> you know once they're uh, uh, okay yeah uh, <laughs> these things worked no we didn't kill the guy so we can tell the world yeah T minus thirty seconds thirty seconds. <laughs> So Penelope, uh, just so you understand the context, um, they are. Uh, this is the first one since they lost a rocket, and uh, their seconds. their goal is to have uh, for nice the first time ever the first 50. stage of the rocket, the big booster. Normally that falls into the ocean. This time it's going to try to land 10, vertically 9, on a pad, 8, so they can reuse 7, it. And if so, 6, that would be huge. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. We're going to have liftoff with Falcon 9. Falcon 9 is clear the tower. So, I'm going to tell you, I was watching that launch last time. It kept getting moved until it was really, really early in the morning uh, on 
east, uh, excuse me, the west coast here. And when all of a sudden we had signal out, that was just... Is this Slade? <laughs> it just killed you? <laughs> oh, cause, and it's like, no, well, And I'm no. wondering, I love all this UI stuff. Where Isn't the, that awesome? It's, it's all the raw telemetry just feeding right into an easy to parse. Uh, man, it's doing 600 kilometers an hour right now. That's amazing. Right. Yeah, uh, in the lo feed I'm watching, it's already at 1,000. It's time shifting. Wait, what, say that again? I refreshed it so I caught up. So oh, it's that's, like, that's hilarious, yeah. Uh, so if I if I see you howl, I'll know something <laughs> yeah, bad's happening. Burst into tears. <laughs> should, should I refresh it and see if I can get an earlier feed here? This is Michael Hammersley, materials engineer. So and I'm going to talk you through US? some of what so, you're seeing and hearing as the vehicle continues to ascend. There, there's. You see the thing they call it max Q is when it hits the atmosphere at the hardest point, and that's when the MERS is going to be the most stress on the rocket, and that's what we're approaching right now. Structurally, whatever things tend to break up at max Q, which is where this is going to at this point. Um, Got it. So we're we just passed max Q. That's why you heard, heard the cheering coming from there was because that's the point at which. The it's that that forward-facing impact the just reached the highest point. Man, as the rocket is increasing in altitude and there's less pressure. Yeah, like what he just said. <laughs> yeah. Um. This is already. This is the... Uh. Okay. Man, this is all just uh, holding our breath time, isn't it? See my dad. Hey, can you see it? Shortly after main entry. Yeah, well, that's it's still going, and if you want to watch it in a couple minutes, go inside to SpaceX. Go ahead, go to uh, SpaceX.com or our site, and you can see if they land it. Uh, in minutes. Cool. All right, let me get back. That's what live coverage from Florida from my father, and they just did separation on the second stage. All right, cool. All right, you'll see, watch, you'll see the glow as it comes back down. Cool. Wow, yeah. Sweet separation. And now we have That's great. So now, so now the, the stage to watch is stage one, right? Yeah, so that first stage, second stage is going to go on to that higher altitude. It's going to take off with the Orbcom satellites. Now, second stage is going to do its, its drift back. We saw that graphic. It's not the most accurate graphic, but it's still a pretty good idea of what's happening. It's got to do a uh, a burn to sort of slow itself down, right? And then it's got to once it when it's got to orient itself. And the way it's designed, it's going to come straight back down over the water. And if they have controls of the thrusters, it's going to shift so, so, its direction so it can land over the pad. So right now, uh, the uh, do, do they fire uh, early rockets to get it in the right position, or is it uh, the first stage in free fall right now as we speak? I believe they do. They're going to. Uh, they they do a uh, a boost back phase where they try to bring it back over position to where they want to land it. Got it. Because uh, the the trajectory where this takes off, I could be mistaken on that. Now think about this. This thing is already almost 200 kilometers away from where. It <laughs> yeah, it's 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 from here to Houston, from Houston to Austin away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just in that time, that's amazing. Is there like somebody's like, hey guys, I'm gonna get a coke out of the. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and unfortunately, right now, there's no eyes on the first stage. I mean, the good news is, of course, we're watching the second stage continue to do its thing uh, very yeah, effectively. Yeah. So they have the, the you know the 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 you know the the first stage as it does its fall back down there, um, and then right now you can see in that graph where they're showing us what's happening as far as at which points could happen. So the the first stage. There's a team now running that. So the first stage is doing apparently its boost back, which is to bring it back into the position and, and align it. And it's got to do, I think it does two burns, like one to slow its ascent and or descent, and then another one shortly before it gets to the pad. Um, but because Orbcom is paying the bill for this flight, you know, we're following stage two. Oh, Orbcom is the satellites that uh, yeah, got they're it. shooting got up it. basically a constellation of satellites, Man. and so. What, what, uh, what brilliant synergy. It's like a free, massive publicity for Orbcom. Oh, yeah. And it was in to Orbcom's credit is that, you know, SpaceX says, hey, can we try? Can we delay the launch to go do this, do the, do the landing? Can we do that? Orbcom would have been very supportive of them on this. And Orbcom was providing their own social media, talking there because they're excited to be part of this. Yeah, sure. You know, and, and I mean, it's also a... a you know, significant thing for them, you know, to be to get the, the, you know, their satellites in place and... Right now, it's fascinating too, too, because the the second stage, it's got it has what they call a constellation of satellites, means that it's going to be sh sending several of them up. 
Yeah. Is it is like a time delay or just release all at once? I don't know. I don't know, Brian. Yeah, I, I believe I don't, it. I don't know. I wish I had an intelligent answer. <laughs> That's fine. Well, well Brian, you we, see what we, we, we do. Can't all be, you know, we, we can't also be rocket scientists on top of everything else. No. Uh, wow, uh, 400 kilometers up. This is we're, yeah. Right now, we're watching the second stage. Uh, the first stage is what we are excited to to see land, but it is in the middle of free falling and uh, uh, correct. There's no cameras on it. The, the, what we're going to see is they're going to cut over from this to show us uh, live footage of that first stage trying to land. It'll be the first time that a stage of a orbital rocket. Now, if you look at the altitude, okay, this this uh, first stage, or excuse me, the second stage now, it's already at 415 kilometers. We're well into space. This thing is like really, really, really into space now. We're passing. Uh, shortly is going to be the altitude of the International Space Station, which is 220 miles. So if you can do the conversion of kilometers, you're a better man than I. Um, which is just to think that's how far. But the thing that we, when we think about space and like space stations and stuff, is we forget that it's not that far up. You know, it's really not that far up in the sense it's 220 miles. Which if you drew a line from the surface of the Earth to where that space station is, the Earth is still massively huge and big around. You know, these things are, you know, three hundred times the altitude of the tallest building we'll ever have. You know, right. Um, so, and you look at the glow of that engine bell. Now, in the second stage, it's got the one engine which pushes it there, which if they ever want to try to land the second stage, they are going to have to change the design of the rocket, or they might just wait until they build the uh, the, the BFR, the big, fun rocket, um, because you have to have thrusters to land. You can use the thrusters of the first stage to enable you to land, but... You know, you can't do that minutes, with seconds, the... Everything continues to go mm. nominal, as we like to say here at SpaceX. Falcon 9 continues to power its way into orbit. The second stage is building up to 4.7 Gs of acceleration. Now, currently, we're about two minutes away from shutdown of the second stage engine to get into orbit. Engine performance continues to be nominal. I'm looking at the trajectory. We're going right down the middle of the track. That's good news. We're right where we want to be. For the first stage, you heard about the first boost back burn. Coming up in another minute or stage so, or coming up very shortly, is the entry burn, and then hopefully the landing burn. And you hear the cheering in the background. Oh man, look at the joy. What's the happening? That's good. They have control of the rocket. The rock thrusters are working and is able to bring itself so far, they think, back to the pad. It's great. in order to get that rocket back down to the, to the ground. Um, but it's actually a super complicated thing. Like, you did some cool analogies, cool math to figure this well, out, right? I tried to figure out how hard this really is. And so I kind of I crunched the numbers with the size of the rocket and the size and how high it's going. What's happening with the first stage is it's like launching a pencil over the Empire State Building, <laughs> having it reverse, come back down, and land on a shoebox on the ground in a windstorm. That's, that's what's happening. The wind happening. is the critical part. Yes. Is that <laughs> all? Like I could throw a pencil over the Look Empire at these graphics. Same thing they're trying to do. And the thing <laughs> is, <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> from this <laughs> crazy the, 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 this extremely energetic So you see that little flip over move it's got to do. Oh, wow. Did they see it on the ground. We're watching this thing come back down. A spaceship named the Falcon is landing. Touchdown! Oh my god, they're gonna cut Brian, you gotta put the shot. Check this out, check this out. Oh my god! Oh my god! Holy cow! LZ-1, the Falcon has landed. Landing operator's movement procedure landed at 100. Section 3 on LZ-1 beating that and recovery that. Repeat, the Falcon has landed. Wow! 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 It's a tough rocket to land. Wow!
look at that. to be just a moment of sheer oh my God. I love the fact that, that we were there. We've been, we were there and, and uh, that's so cool. So for everybody here with us, let's recap what just happened. If you want to talk about the major achievements in space and aerospace. Are they shouting USA? <laughs> Oh, wow. Our first, first time this has ever happened. Moon here is just exciting. This is incredible. So, in major milestone achievements, um, getting, getting, reaching space was one, but we won't talk about who did that first. Right. Uh, getting to orbit with a satellite, which Sputnik, getting a man in space, Jürgen, and these are all major technological achievements. Landing a booster stage back in that condition, without it dumping into the motion, without parachute, without doing that, is the most significant milestone we've probably had. You might, you know, you could you could make the case of landing the space shuttle orbiter like you did, although that was, wasn't all that reusable, but that was a big piece of significant hardware that landed in the means other than just dumping into the ocean via parachutes or whatever. Right. Well, this is, this, this is, is true, this is bigger. true you know, reusability. This is, this is the, this is the difference between, you know, Kitty Hawk versus, you know, a 747, you know, the, the reusable, Commercial. I mean, we just witnessed, we just witnessed the cost of orbit uh, potentially reduced by an order of magnitude. Well, we watched seventy percent of the cost become reusable. That's true. That's true. Uh, yeah. I mean, that uh, uh, that's huge. And and the the, the technology, you know, of of the lower part of the of bringing something down. Now that we've done that, now it comes into the if to do a second stage. Those second stage velocities are at. Those are going at orbital velocity, which means they have to have like a heat shield on the front. This thing doesn't need a heat shield at the, at the speed that it's, I mean, it has a blade of heat, you know, protective all that, sure, but it's sure, not but, going but, really. But it doesn't have to worry about burning up on re-entry the way yeah, the second but stage would have to. We, we live in an age in which rockets are mostly reusable. <laughs> that's huge, man. That's huge. That's, that's, this is, this is, uh, this is the beginning of the chances for uh, folks like you and me to experience going into space. Oh, not for me, Brian. Oh, you I would be go? cheering you all on. Yeah. But, uh. <laughs> uh, each satellite weighs about 172 kilograms. <laughs> He's like, guys, don't you care about the satellites? We're like, no! <laughs> we really don't. Somebody said, yeah, they still have to get the other stuff to orbit in our chat room. Yeah, but we've done that. <laughs> each satellite, when stowed, is about a meter by a meter by half a meter tall. So about yay, yay, and straight down. It's about the size of a, one of the, the small Oops. refrigerators, uh, but that doesn't mean it's, it's nowhere near that simple. Fully deployed, uh, the satellite actually extends out its arms 13 meters, uh, about the size of a telephone pole. Now, the 11 satellites are mated uh, in three tiers. There are we four. Just in the same away, week, three, and I saw Star Wars last night, or, you know, that same period, in, in the same engine. week that we saw new Star Wars, we watched a cargo ship called the Falcon land on a landing pad in real life. It's pretty amazing. They should have named it uh, Docking Bay 94. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's so good. So good. Mark points out that uh, they are a, they, they ran the video backwards, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Satellite separation events. Satellites are working too, so this is a money maker. Dude, big big win for SpaceX today. I mean, big win for all of us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to allow the satellites to have some spacing to give them their proper location within. Uh, the constellation that's going to provide that continuous global coverage that Lauren oh, man. was Or the NSA earlier. to monitor our telephone calls. But forget about that. <laughs> uh, what's the over-under on a snarky tweet directed towards uh, Jeff Bezos in three, two, one? <laughs> 
truly the even more rarest of rare breeds. <laughs> How lucky we are we're to be part of <laughs> We're just Huge covered in unicorns here, aren't we? Uh, no. You saw the uh, the the celebratory thing that lost uh, Jurassic Park did for Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, that was sweet. Oh, sweet! Satellites are working. Good. I'll pretend I care about that as much. I mean, still, we you know they we want this to be a money maker for uh, oh, I know, I know, I know. You'll notice that we're, uh, you can only see one satellite come off the, the actual payload fairing. Because we forgot to load uh, them because we needed the extra space uh, for the fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> wow. So, Brian, I believe the way they're going to do it is that they're going to be letting the satellites wow, eject one by one as it flies through space. <laughs> I'm glad we got that settled. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad, uh, you know... Extremely, extremely excited. How amazing that uh, yeah, that that the ability to cover all this is just as important as the doing it. You know? Oh my God! I love so like SpaceX. Their tweets boost back has started. Stage two burner remains nominal. Stage one entry startup, and then stage one has landed. The worst thing that could happen is after this incredible moment, if something goes wrong here, it really would kill the bus. So. You know, we really, you know, want to get this right now just to orient me and everyone else. Man, this so was a full-on, I mean, you know, granted, there's still time to jinx it, but this was in every way a massive, massive success. And now there's two more deployments. Three more deployments. Three more deployments, yes. okay. Three more deployments, Brian. Let's, uh... And you're only seeing about one go up at a time. And we're watching, you know, here we are on the internet watching stuff from, we're watching things in space right now. <laughs> you know, we're watching satellites being ejected from a rocket in space. And this is an entirely private mission too. And just remember that is a live view from space. That is the blackness of space. We are 620 kilometers in space right now. Nothing is cool. In it looks space. like it's just sitting there calmly and these things are coming out and everything's going slowly when the fact is these things are going 17,000 miles an hour. Uh, and, and I kind of figured out once that if, uh, if, 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 if you're on the beach and, and something was going this fast out into the ocean, it would go over the horizon and out of sight in a half a second. That's, That's how fast these are going. Right? So there's my like fourth deployment, deployment and another successful one. deployment. My, one more. my question for, uh, for this is... Uh, is Orbcom like, well, since you got your first stage back, we're going to get a discount, right? <laughs> so uh, our friend Tensor Guy says that second stage engine looks pretty intact. How long until we reuse that? That is, there is a team of SpaceX engineers waiting. They're going to they're gonna take that entire thing apart, of course, because they want to figure out what... How much damage, how reusable yeah. it is. I mean, that's the other thing is, is, yes, we have success on landing that first stage. But uh, but but how usable is it? Well, I mean, if everything has micro fractures and is unusable, then well, you know. but 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 actually, Bry, yeah, glad, glad you wrapped that up because what's interesting is that uh, with whenever they do these rockets, whenever they put them on the pad, they make sure those engines have gone through tons and tons of burns. They want to make sure that the engines work. So there is the you're absolutely right. There's the possibility of like fractures and things like that, and they will look for that stuff, but. This hardware gets tested so much on the ground before it goes up yeah. that the kind of stress that it goes through at launch, you know, is absolutely significant, but it's not the most catastrophic stress that it necessarily has gone through. Man, that's so fantastic. You know, and we'll see. And like, but you, you, you know, they they want to figure out the reusability of every single part from the landing legs to everything else, like, you know, from the landing legs, of course, to the engines and the upper structures to all those mechanisms that release and stuff. So you know, I, I guarantee you, their their goal will be to try to send this. They will. They're going to take this sucker apart. I'm sure. Yep. Reassemble it and try to send it up. And then they want to figure out how do you, where do you want to measure these, you know, fractures. And remember, when we were at SpaceX, we saw the cameras they used. These industrial robotic arms with these precision cameras that went over every, literally, every square inch of the surface looking for this stuff. So that becomes a new thing. Now, what the problem with the space shuttle was. There were several problems, but one of them is that they said it was reusable, but they had to take the entire thing apart, replace the parts and all that, where it would have been probably cost-effective just to have built a 
if you took the reusability, the, all the technologies to make it reusable, and you just built a bigger booster and a bigger payload thing for it, it probably would have made more sense, which is why ULA's program, the Vulcan rocket, they're just going to try to recover the, 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 the boosters. They're going to let everything else, the cylinders and all that, fall into the ocean. They, like, they think if they can get those boosters back, then they can cut their costs maybe 20% or 30% or maybe more. I mean, it could be 50 or 60%. So it's incremental. Look at, what are you, Brian, what are you seeing right now? Uh, I'm seeing a ship that landed. I'm seeing a, a, a ship ready for its next takeoff. Look at it. It's all, it's all scored and charred. and uh, It's freaking dope, man. It's like a drive across the desert, Brian. We'll just hose that thing down. Uh, yeah. And, and moving forward, a big part of what uh, um, SpaceX wants to do is their plans for the BFR, the big friendly rocket, um, or maybe it's F stands for something else, involves heavy amounts of reusability, and Elon Musk has held off. He was going to make an announcement about that this year, but then they had the delays from the, the rocket they lost and whatnot. So we may see announcements about that very, very soon now that this has been done. Uh, Lazy Dog points out that carbon scoring does add some character. does look like the Millennium Falcon. Real. It's real. Uh, man. Wow, I'm so happy that we all tuned in for this together. That was that was amazing. Yeah, the the two of us who always host the show. <laughs> I'm so glad the two of us invented this show. What happened to what's his face? Uh, I don't I don't know who that is. All right. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, dude, I guess I guess we'll go ahead and shut down the stream. Um, uh, I, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll see you guys later on. I'm, I might play some Defense Grid 2 uh, here in a bit. Uh, so, But I'll see you guys later on. <laughs> so Jeff Bezos put his quote here. You ready? Oh, uh, what is it? Congrats, on, congrats, SpaceX, on landing Falcon suborbital booster stage. Welcome to the club. Oh, well, what did your rocket, what did your boost? <laughs> Jeff, I forgot. What was what was your <laughs> payload on top of yours that it sent? Dude, Jeff, Jeff does not have the, the high ground to be <laughs> talking no. that way. Oh, that's hilarious. That's hilarious.